Hello, I've got a new thing for you today. I've written it up in my trusty notebook, so get yourself comfortable and we can get into it. Self-esteem, the esteem power model. I've often found myself needing to delve into psychology and look into issues such as self-esteem. This was either to help myself with an issue or to help someone else with an issue. In my efforts to help people who sought my advice about life issues or personal issues, I read up in different things such as psychology and relationship issues and so on, so I'd at least have a chance of knowing what I was talking about. In this process I learned about different psychological approaches, and I did this for two main reasons. A. To help myself understand what was going on with people so that I could hopefully I could help them. And B to be able to offer people some understanding of themselves and the causes of their problems so that in future they'll be able to help themselves. However, often that did not work very well. Trying to help people understand themselves didn't tend to go very far. Usually they just wanted to talk or they wanted some ideas or suggestions, but weren't all that interested in going into theories about human nature. But part of the problem was that trying to help people understand themselves using most of the models that I'd come across to explain human behavior, used all sorts of highly specialized terminology. By the time I'd spend a few minutes trying to help somebody understand themselves using the terms I'd come across, their eyes would be starting to glaze over. It seemed to me that it would be good to have a useful and flexible model of human nature that used fairly common everyday terms, which people could use to understand themselves. Terms like self-esteem, self-confidence, and self-worth can be very useful for that. But the problem is that different people use these terms in different ways, sometimes in very different ways. I once went through all the psychology books in a major academic bookstore looking for a consistent definition of things like self-esteem or self-confidence, but could not find any such definition. Mostly the writers would not define the terms they use at all, or they use them to mean something different from other authors. And in digging into it, it seemed to me that there was a lot of confusion around what self-esteem actually is. Even the professionals in the field seem to mix up the related terms or use them interchangeably. For example, what is the difference between self-esteem and self-confidence? Are these the same thing or are they different? What about self-respect? Is that the same thing as self-esteem or something entirely different? We could possibly come to an answer intuitively, but it might be very different from somebody else's answer. We need to understand what self-esteem is in order to get more of it in our lives. But how can we understand it if we do not define it more specifically? Eventually, I decided to give terms like self-esteem, self-confidence, self-worth and self-respect very specific definitions and to offer these definitions to my unofficial clients when it seemed that these definitions might be useful to them. I would tell someone who did not feel worthy of good things and did not like themselves very much, they were having self-worth issues, as that seemed a reasonable assumption. This is very different from someone who was facing challenges where they needed to develop specific skills so they could face a task they needed to do or a role they needed to play in life. That was often an issue of developing life skills or even technical skills as much as it was about how they felt about themselves. And that seemed to me to have to do with self-confidence issues as it related to their performance and how good they felt about their ability to perform specific tasks. I could see that things like self-confidence issues, feeling uncertain about an ability to perform a specific task, might also trigger self-worth issues and cause the person to feel unworthy However, that would depend on the person, and self-confidence and self-worth still seemed like specific and distinct issues. Self-confidence and self-worth are often interrelated and interconnected, and that is possibly why very different issues are lumped together under the general term of self-esteem. Over time, I went further with this as part of my efforts to help geeky, techy type of people like myself to deal with personal and interpersonal issues. This is what I came up with as someone with an engineering background trying to come to terms with human nature and do what I could to help people flourish. This is a homegrown attempt to understand self-esteem. It is an attempt to define self-esteem in everyday language 
and to do so in ways which help people understand themselves better and where they can most effectively make adjustments to live a more fulfilling life. To differentiate from others' attempts to do the same thing, let's give this a name. In fact, let's give it a topical name and call it the Esteem Power Model. The Esteem Power Model. Let's start with the definition of self-esteem. Self-esteem is a feeling of well-being which arises from feeling good about your purpose, feeling good about yourself, and feeling good about your abilities. Self-esteem, in order to be consistent and resilient, is a mix of these three things. Sense of purpose, sense of self, and a sense of capability. To make our definition even clearer, we can describe these things which make up self-esteem and give them definitions as well. Self-confidence. We can define this as feeling good about our skills and abilities in a given area because this gives us a sense of confidence. This is obviously self-confidence as such confidence is in ourselves and our abilities. We may be confident in one area but not in another. So our level of self-confidence may vary depending on what it is we're actually doing. Self-worth. We could define this as feeling good about who you are as a person, giving a feeling of being likable, maybe even lovable. It's a feeling that you're intrinsically worthy. So we can call this self-worth. With self-worth, we have a sense of being valued just for who we are, independent of anything else. When our self-worth is high, we like ourselves relatively independently of whether our social status rises or falls. Self-respect. We can define self-respect as feeling good about your purpose. This means you're being true to your own values and beliefs. Only something which is in harmony with your values and beliefs will feel to you like it has a worthwhile purpose. When this is the case, you're respecting your inner self by according to what feels true to you. In other words, you're showing respect for yourself and your own values by living them. We can call this self-respect. The different parts of self-esteem. We can see these three self-confidence, self-worth and self-respect as being aspects of self-esteem. When these three are balanced and in harmony, we feel like we're firing in all cylinders and our inner engine is running smoothly. These three parts of self-esteem are distinct yet closely interconnected. Changes in one can affect the others. It is this interconnection between them which can cause them to sometimes be confused for each other. If, for example, if we do not respect our own values and beliefs by living them, then our level of self-respect will go down. Since this means we are doing things we don't believe in, we may be half-hearted about what we're doing and not do a good job in our chosen line of work. This can reduce our self-confidence as we are not expressing a high level of skill and abilities. If we are not standing up for what we believe in or not doing a good job, then we may start to judge ourselves as cowardly, useless or no good and this will reduce our level of self-worth as well. This shows that something which affects one part of our self-esteem can eventually cause the others to be affected too because losing self-respect can eventually cause us to lose self-confidence and self-worth. Root Causes of Self-Esteem Problems If the root cause of a problem with self-esteem is lack of a sense of purpose, with the definition we're using, then this will impact on our self-respect. In this case, working on our self-confidence or self-worth will not make much difference to our self-esteem. We need to work on a sense of purpose and bolster our self-respect to do that. We need to align ourselves more with the highest values in order to bolster our self-respect. Likewise, if the root cause of a self-esteem problem is needing to learn skills and abilities in a given area, then just boosting our self-worth will not help. More self-worth will not ultimately solve the problem. It might solve a side effect of our lack of confidence that's also damaging our self-worth, but it will not solve the underlying cause. The underlying cause is dealt with by recognizing the skills we need to learn and gaining those skills or by approaching it through our, our self-respect to ensure that the area we're working on fits with our purpose and our values. Sometimes people get stuck in seeing every self-esteem issue as being a self-worth issue, but as we can see, this is clearly not true. Without a valid sense of purpose relevant to our own core values, and without the skills to express that purpose, our self-esteem will remain incomplete and fragile. No matter how many affirmations we do that we are a worthy person or how many people tell us so, it will not touch our core issue. Similarly,